Hello, Patrick, and welcome to the Green New Perspective podcast. Nice to be here, Dunya. So for starters, can you tell me a bit more about yourself, about your role at C0, and introduce us to the company? Sure. Um, so I'm a chemical engineer by training um, and have spent a lot of my time uh, in the energy transition space. So coming out of school, joined an oil major, spent a lot of time with carbon capture and storage, a lot of time on biofuels on multiple generations, and ended up landing at C0 um, in 2023 to really focus on uh, taking the technology from the lab out into the field through scale up and then to commercialization. And that technology is all wrapped up in the name, C0 decarbonizing natural gas. And that's our goal. How we decarbonize natural gas is we want to separate the hydrogen that's in natural gas from the carbon. So those hydrogen and carbon molecules are connected together. The primary component in natural gas is methane. So one carbon, four hydrogen atoms. And we tend to think of methane as a relatively reactive molecule because we're used to just burning it with oxygen, but it's actually pretty stable. And so being able to separate that into a solid carbon and then hydrogen molecules is actually pretty difficult. And this is where C0 is focusing our energies is to find a, a better route, an economic route that is scalable to be able to make a solid carbon product and then hydrogen to future hydrogen economy. And how has the company evolved since its inception, let's say? So C0 started uh, looking at a uh, molten salt, uh, molten metal technology. And when we were developing that, you know, there was a number of first of a kind technologies that were required. And we have a couple of key tenants in our design philosophy. And, you know, those tenants are really based around wanting to be able to produce hydrogen at scale, at like an industrially sized uh, scale that's relevant, 100,000 tons a year. Um, everyone thinks in different units with hydrogen, so that's about 115 million scuffs a day for, for those in North America. And, you know, in order to scale that large, you have to have a system that allows you to do that. And one of the key things with any methane pyrolysis technology is how do you get heat into the system? Methane pyrolysis without a catalyst works at around 1,000 to 1,200 degrees Celsius, right? So you've got materials of construction challenges. You've got just challenges of how do you get the heat in, right? If you remember, mm -hmm. heat has to flow from a higher quality heat source to a lower temperature heat source. So um, being able to get that much heat in to a volume is very difficult. But C0... Um, realized is through this development pathway, we could get there, but there were so many first of a kind of technologies that we would have to do. We would miss our objective of being technically ready to do commercial projects by the end of the decade. So we took a lot of uh, thinking and came up with our new process that we are in the process of uh, scaling up. We've got our pilot plant in Texas that is wrapping up construction that will produce up to a ton of carbon a day. And um, several hundred kilograms of hydrogen to allow us to learn beyond just what we've learned in the lab scale on, you know, your traditional benchtop stuff, but we're going into, you know, that true scale up that um, getting the design tools to get to the deployment. And so our, our technology we're hoping is going to allow us to hit that goal by the end of the decade, um, scalable to industrial size things. And the other big differentiator about our technology is, we believe that renewable electrons are going to have a very valuable purpose in society beyond just creating hydrogen. So we're trying to drive our entire process with the chemical potential inherent in the natural gas. So we do this all with relatively low consumption of uh, electricity, so just a few kilowatt hours per kilogram of hydrogen. And how do you position yourself in this highly competitive landscape of, of hydrogen production and carbon capture. If you're somewhere that has um, great natural gas infrastructure, which most of the industrialized world does, right? And so um, if you have that natural gas infrastructure, but you don't have a place to put CO2, whether that's because of geology, whether that's because of 
um, permitting issues of getting a pipeline across or whether that's due to other regulatory regimes of some countries have said no onshore sequestration and it's mm -hmm. a really long ways to you know an offshore location. Um, that's where C0 can really come into play, utilizing the existing natural gas infrastructure, utilizing uh, railways or uh, barge traffic down a river to be able to move the solid carbon to either a sequestration location or to some other beneficial use application. And how do you see the impact of your tech on the whole industry? So I think there. So I think our technology can impact the industry by solving, you know, the, the, the unique set of challenges that we've designed for, that we've set our tenants around. You've got a lot of places in the world that have uh, potential for re renewable resources of wind power and solar power. But you also have quite a number of places that don't have those renewable electrons and doing either CCS or hydrogen becomes, uh, you know, the, the next best alternative. But if you don't have the geology or regulatory things, and, and I think there's a large amount of industry that is currently underestimating the challenges of sequestering the CO2, that we provide an alternative. We have a solid carbon product that is easy to sequester. It's non-hazardous. Um, it, it, it's solid carbon, right? Uh, we, we joke it's a coal mine in reverse. Um, <laughs> We can use a lot of the existing infrastructure of rail and silos and transportation. And, and so I think, you know, that's how we see ourselves impacting industries as people are going through these studies of what they're going to do. They're going to find these constraints that's going to kind of push them to saying, man, I really wish methane pyrolysis had a solution. And then they're going to find that C0 is going to uh, be their best option. Mm -hmm. And if people want to learn more about C0 and your tech and methane paralysis, but can they get informed? So they can reach out through uh, c0.energy. Our website is the best way to see us. Um, you can also find us at many of the hydrogen conferences of Hydrogen Expo, uh, Sarah Week, um, and a number of other places. Um, we, we do go out there to try and meet with uh, potential clients and get you plugged in and do some feasibility studies of how our technology can help solve your problems. Well, Patrick, thank you for, for being my guest here in the podcast. Hope our um, public got a little bit informed about what you do and what C0 does. Um, and I wish you all the best with your, with your future projects. All right. Thank you very much for having me, Dunya. Thank you for watching New Perspective Spotlight series. If you like our content, please consider subscribing to our social media channel and follow our podcast on your favorite streaming platform. Thanks.